Now you might be thinking to yourself, hey, didn't Bob say he was going to put this set on the back burner while he got back to other projects? Yes, I did. However, as a fellow collector and restorer who's in need of some parts, I found some knobs for him and those are ready to ship out, but he also asked if I had a high voltage coil for an Admiral 19A1 chassis. Now this came out of that Canadian set I showed in the earlier video and it was damaged. There was a hack in this coil here and there was a break in it. No continuity. The primary was okay though. The uh, multi uh, turn coil there with thicker wire that's the primary and then there's two pancake secondaries that are in series with each other. Well I started unraveling it and eventually I got to where I no longer had a break. Now to do that I had to remove oh, probably about two layers of, of um, windings. You can probably see that it's a smaller diameter now. And the overall resistance dropped a bit. It's supposed to be about a thousand ohms now it's down to maybe 950 ohms. However, I'm hoping that's close enough. Now and then I'm asked, where do I get spare parts for things like this, flybacks, yokes, when they go bad? And my answer, unfortunately, is you don't. <laughs> you, you ask around, you scavenge them from other sets, or you repair them. There is one alpha called Moyers that does have some stuff in stock, some of the more common stuff or more recent stuff. But certain items like predict the flyback, zenith porthole flybacks, those inventories dried up long ago. And uh, these, I believe, are also fairly hard to get. Now, in addition to the damaged coil, the base was also broken. You can see that somebody hot glued it at some point in the past. Anyways, I think I've repaired it well enough that it should work. Maybe with slightly reduced high voltage because of the reduction in the number of turns, but... Considering how many turns there are, I don't think I knocked off more than 1 or 2 percent. So I want to pop it into this set because this set's more or less working. So the question is, how much of a hassle is that going to be? So first I want to get this box off. That's where the coil is. And then it connects down below. Now I can already tell that at the very least I'm going to have to remove this which I believe is a high voltage filter cap. I'm kind of curious too anyways because it's way way bigger than I would expect it to be. And according to the schematic it should be one of these, 0 0.005 at 6,000 volts. Although this is a replacement rated at higher voltage. But this thing's huge so I'm curious to see what values in it. I think with that out of the way the high voltage coil mounts right there. And I know there's a couple wires that go over to the socket on the high voltage rectifier. Those are the two orange wires. And then there are two wires that go to the primary. That's here and there. And then this one I'm not sure about. Because it doesn't seem to connect to anything on this coil. It's just kind of a freestanding terminal. So I'm not sure what that's all about. And then finally that goes to the high voltage rectifier. Um, anode cap. I just removed that capacitor and if I rotate it around we see written by hand 0 0.05 microfarad 6,000 volts. That's 10 times what it should be. It's here on the schematic is 0 0.005. So that might explain why the image takes a while to appear on the set when I turn it on. There seems to be a longer lag than I was expecting. It could be because this capacitor is really loading down the high voltage output as it charges up. So I'm going to replace with this with a 0 .0047 microfarad. I happen to have a few on hand. So down in here where that screw is. So that screw is what goes into that threaded shaft that's damaged on this flyback. And those wires coming out, those are the wires that go to the base of it. So what I need to do is undo those three wires. Yellow gray and red that all go over to this tube socket and then the two orange which go over to the filament on that tube socket and then undo that screw and it should lift right out. It's driven by this 6V6 so what might those three wires be? Okay. Oh okay one of them goes to a feedback ring around the rectifier that's how the Motorola VT71's work too. And then 
Here's the two that go to the other side of that primary. So that floating lug that I was wondering about, that must just be an anchor point for this tickler coil that we'll find around the rectifier too. I just popped the cover off the high voltage cage and as we can see the two coils look quite similar and it turns out that I was right that that center post down there does go to this feedback loop that just wraps around the high voltage rectifier so that little loop there going back down to the oscillator tube here is enough to provide feedback to keep this whole thing running I just finished on mounting the good high voltage coil you have to be oh so careful when you do this because it's an incredibly fine wire that runs up from this lug and goes over around here and into this coil here. You brush against that, touch it, look at it the wrong way, it snaps and then you're in for a bunch of fun. However, there is a trick that I wrote about online that will aid you in repairing these fine wires if they break. I didn't believe it when I read about it, but I did give it a try and it does work. But I warn you, it produces some really nasty fumes, so you gotta have a fan going, you gotta have some good ventilation. What you do is you use aspirin. Not ibuprofen or any of the other substitutes, but genuine aspirin. Take your little tablet, take your piece of very fine enameled wire, lay it on the aspirin and heat, take your soldering iron tip and melt the aspirin and that will dissolve the coating off of the wire and leave you with a nice clean bare wire. Here's a little demonstration using a fragment of broken wire that I had removed from the coil earlier. See, it's incredibly fine, so fine there's just no way you could use emery paper or anything abrasive to clean that off and I don't know of any solvents that do a good job. So, take your wire, put it on the aspirin and touch your iron. You see, it dissolves or melts quite readily. You get kind of a little pool going. See all those nasty fumes coming off. And Probably hard to see, but it is actually coming clean. There, let's see if my camera will focus on that. It is actually clean copper on the end there. If I take a little solder and tin that, it might be easier to see. There, so, <laughs> hope you guys can see that. That is a nice tinned end on that incredibly fine wire. Now I could splice that against another piece of fine wire if there was a break, or I could wrap that around a binding post to restore continuity. Here's that repaired coil mounted in the chassis so I can test it. The wiring down below is just sort of loosely tacked into place so I can easily remove it and put the other coil back in. This one was missing its feedback loop so I just wrapped some telephone wire around the tube and tacked it down to the tie point. Now while doing this I couldn't resist testing and checking some of the components in the associated circuitry, in particular the output tube an oscillator that drives this thing and I found one that the 100 ohm resistor in the cathode circuit goes from cathode to ground had drifted up to where it was measuring 156 ohms instead of 100 ohms in other words more than 50 percent high now that's going to limit the current that's going through to the primary 
on this coil. So that can't be a good thing, so I replace that. Now also, there's supposed to be a 0 0.05 microfarad cap in this circuit, and I found a 0 0.033, so I replaced that too. So I'll be curious to see what kind of difference that might make. Alright, so I think this is uh, good enough to test, so I'll swing the chassis around and hook it up to some power, and let's see what happens. Now I'm not going to even bother hooking up a signal source, because I'm not trying to receive a picture or anything. I just want to see if i got a nice bright raster. In other words, this coil is doing its job of producing some high voltage, so here goes. Tubes are lighting up. Also, obviously I'm leaving the shield off this because I want to see what's going on. I don't think that will affect its operation. Might not be working right. Oh wait, wait, wait. So it still has a problem where it takes a long time to come up and see how it starts from the bottom and gradually rises up. It's got to be something to do with some capacitors. So I'm, I'm really anxious to dive into this set and uh, do some more troubleshooting on it, but if I do that, nothing will ever get done, so I really want to get back to my other outstanding projects. I really just wanted to test this coil, and it sure does seem like it's working. Holds all over the place though. I guess I will hook up a signal source to make sure that uh, this thing can actually lock. But uh, really, this is a free running oscillator, so getting a horizontal lock on the picture should be completely independent of this high voltage circuit. Well, I am able to get. A stable picture, but it looks really weird. A lot of crazy interference going on. I'm hoping that simply because I left a shield off this, uh, I'll reinstall this aluminum box and see if it makes any difference. Reinstalling that metal box helped a bit, but it was still pretty noisy, so I flipped the chassis on its side to see if I had made a mistake. And pretty quickly I realized that, yes, I sure did. Remember I took this giant filter cap out? I never replaced it with anything. So, here is what I'm going to use. Instead of a .05, I'll use a .0047. Yeah, I would say that high voltage capacitor made quite the difference. I'd say it's working just as good as it did with the other high voltage coil. These lines you still see in here are horizontal retrace, I believe. I remember the whole point of this exercise was to test this repaired high voltage coil to see if it worked all right so I can hand it off to another restorer who's badly in need of one. And I would say this is a success. So I can now take this <laughs> cover back off, pop this coil out, put the other one back in, and button the set back up and get back to my other projects. I hope you enjoyed this look at the high voltage oscillator circuitry in an Admiral 17 T1 chassis.